Hey guys, so today I'm going to go through some accounting basics. It's going to cover expenses and accounts payable. So by the end of this lesson, you'll be able to understand what are expenses and what's account payable. How do they fit in with the profit or loss account and the balance sheet? And also, how do you recognize a transaction when an expense occurs? And then finally, I'll go over how a company actually documents an expense and an accounts payable position. So let's get into it. So what is an expense? So an expense is something that you can see on your profit or loss account. Okay, so an expense can fit into cost of sales, operating expenses, it could be overheads, or it could be other specific charges such as interest or depreciation. So an expense is a cost that you incur from operating your business. An example would be if you bought stationery, for instance, say you bought five pencils for one pound each you would effectively expense five pound to your profit or loss account. An accounts payable position will also be called a creditor. So this is money you owe to people. So often at times you don't buy things with cash, you buy it on credit. Therefore you've received the service or you've received the product that you've purchased, but you're yet to actually pay the person that provided you that service. So you have to put on your balance sheet an accounts payable position because that's the money you owe to somebody else. An accounts payable position is something that sits within your current liability section of your balance sheet. So I'm now going to go through the transaction flow when you incur an expense within your business. So this can happen in two ways. The first can be a cash purchase. So if you were to buy stationery for your business so your business can operate effectively, then in this instance you would increase your expense position on your profit or loss account and you would decrease your cash position and then cash sits within current assets on your balance sheet. A credit purchase is something where you haven't paid for it in cash straight away. So for instance, if you get some plumbing work done at the factory that you operate your business from, well, they've come and provided the service to you and invoiced you for that service. You owe them a hundred pound, for instance, for the services they've provided, but you haven't paid them the cash yet, but you have to recognize the expense because that's happened in the year in which you have had the service performed. So in this instance, you would again recognize an expense by increasing the expense position within your profit or loss account. And then you would also increase the liability section, your accounts payable position within your balance sheet. And accounts payable sits within current liabilities on your balance sheet. So your current liability section would increase on your balance sheet. I'm now gonna go through the T accounts that are associated with recognizing an accounts payable position. So I start with an expense T account, an accounts payable T account. When I incur an expense for a hundred pounds, say I make a purchase, I debit my expense column a hundred pounds to increase my expenses. And I would also credit my accounts payable position to increase the liability section on my balance sheet. Then when I make a payment for the amount that I owe the person for the amount that's sitting in my accounts payable, I have to bring up a cash T account and then I debit my accounts payable position. So I've made a payment on the amount I owe to the person who's provided the service to me. And then I credit my cash account. So I reduce my current asset position on my balance sheet. And so that's basically how you transact for an accounts payable and expense. So to recap, when an expense has occurred, but I haven't paid them for the value in cash yet, I will debit my expense account on my profit or loss account in order to increase my expense column. And I would credit my accounts payable on my balance sheet in order to increase the liability position on my balance sheet. Then when I make a payment against that accounts payable position, I will debit my accounts payable position to decrease my liability position. And I will credit my cash account because I'm money going out of my account. I'm lowering my asset position for the money I'm making as a payment. Now I'm going to go through some documentation that is released or you receive as part of your business in order to keep track of the transaction that's been occurred. So say for instance you buy a hundred t-shirts, you will effectively raise a purchase order to say within your company this is the kind of purchase that I want to make. Then when you receive the hundred t-shirts you will then receive 
a delivery note for confirmation of the receipt of receiving the items. Then the company will invoice you for the 100 t-shirts. At this point in time, you then debit your expense and credit your accounts payable position. As you receive the invoice, you know that you now have 30 days in order to make the payment for the t-shirts that you purchased. Then when you've made the payment within 30 days, you will then receive a receipt for the amount that you've paid. When the cash exits your account, you effectively credit your cash account and you debit your account's payable position to clear off the amount that you owe to the person who's provided the t-shirts. Say you are consistently purchasing items from this supplier, well, you might want to know at the end of the year how much balance is still outstanding in order to reconcile against your account's payable position. Well, what you do is you ask for a remittance advice and they will provide it and it'll show how much of a balance is still outstanding. From that point in time, you can then decide whether it matches up with your account's payable position and what are the discrepancies. That's basically it. That is your expenses and your account's payable position. Position. Having watched this, you should now know what an expense is, what an accounts payable is, how you transact for it in your business, and also the documentation that is released in order for you to keep track of the transactions that have occurred. If you like this lesson, then please subscribe and like the video. I'm going to be making a lot more videos like this for accounting advice and help to get you on your way. So, thank you for watching.